everyone. Uh, so my paper will somehow uh, continue the issues that that Van Herk just uh, has started. Um, because I also would like to draw attention to uh, oviative aspects of timber, which in my opinion are unworthily abandoned a little bit uh, in the horizons of foliation field, uh, which is highly centered on pitch and rhythmic issues. So I would like to make a step further into this area. Uh, I would like to start um, with the introduction of two basic notions uh, that Pierre Boulez <coughs> has designated in his pivotal article, Timber and Composition, Timber and Language, 1987. He distinguished two basic types characterizing the role of timber in compositional practice. Uh, the first one, called raw timber, was indicated as evident and best exposed in small ensembles where discrete features of timbers are clearly perceived. The second one, called organized timber or fused timber, was referred basically to orchestral conditions and appearing as an emergent quality that may be invoked through a combination of multitude of timbers. This research aims to deepen the notion of raw timber as well as to stretch the perspective of fused timber further. Um, to go to the very basic, in its most common sense, timber is usually associated with an ability to attribute sounds to their sources. In musical contexts, it is mostly to musical instruments or human voices. Um, we can even observe a tendency that timber and instrument are almost assimilated in the consciousness of musicians or non-musicians. As an ethnomusicologist, Cornelia Fales well observed um, the common locution that we tend to say, I hear a cricket, not I hear a sound that may indicate the presence of a cricket. Or even more, we impose our reaction to the sound source. We say, I hear a sad violin, when it is a sound we hear, and we who are sad. The meaning of timber as an attribute of an instrument uh, was t termed raw timber by Boulez. Um, this common awareness is worth of deeper consideration, though. Um, let's take this notion of timber equaled to musical instrument as a certain unquestionable object, an initial form or the most elementary substance. Um, as it was just mentioned, um, timber is related uh, with the innate ability to identify uh, the sound source. It is actually true that it is one of the strongest and most relevant potentialities in regard to timber. First of all, because of its practical utility in many everyday life situations. Uh, such as recognition of a warning signal, for example, or mother's voice, and sometimes becoming even uh, of crucial importance for human survival, as for example, recognizing a roar of a lion. Um, this fact corresponds strongly to the abruptness that is so characteristic in associating timber to a sound source and it is grasped with much less efforts, even by not musically educated people, than structures based on other musical parameters, such as modes, uh, melodies, or rhythms. This property of recognizing a sound source, if put it into musical context, serves as an effective uh, vehicle to ensure the unity or segmentation of musical structures. For example, uh, the particular instrumentation is employed to render a melody, uh, a melodic phrase, uninterruptedly. Um, or to separate a melody from accompaniment. It may be reasoned by the natural tendency to associate sound not only to its source, 
but also to link sounds that originate from the same or similar sources. However, if we put this conventional habit to a more specific consideration, it is not hard to observe how generalized the comprehension of timber as equivalent to musical instrument is. What I want to say is that there is multitude of diverse qualities, slight nuances which are covered under this generalized category of one instrument. Uh, first of all, we tend to categorize timber of an instrument to its entire family, ignoring the differences that appear from instrument to instrument. Uh, let's take a violin as a timber per se, for example. Of course, many of, of us would recognize a, t a timber of violin. However, we can hardly find two violins sounding exactly the same. Uh, the particular physiognomical constitution of each instrument determines the specific of its sound. Maybe it is mostly apparent in case of the peculiarity of human voice, however, each instrument has its particular sound as well. What is more, one instrument shares different timbral qualities in respect to its particular register. As the most common example uh, is a case of clarinets registers, which feature extremely different qualities in its low, middle, or high registers. And as Robert Erickson pointed out, the sonograms uh, would suggest that they are three different instruments instead of a one. Uh, to go further, a performer can employ a wide range of playing techniques that expands the diversity of timbral quality to hardly circumscribed areas. Uh, all this diversity of qualities falls into domain of timber of one instrument in a traditional sense of a term and presupposes at least theoretically its uniformity. We link all these different shades of sounds on the base of their belonging to one source. Uh, we can delve into even a deeper level, which is actually being over the perceptual facility of human cognition. The very phenomenon of timber itself is found as a perceptual merger of several distinct parameters. Uh, there is a multitude of factors indicated by psychoacoustic researchers contributing to the perception of timber. However, we can very roughly reduce them into several distinct categories, um, such as partial tones or overtones, uh, which in its origin is pitch phenomenon, uh, then evolution in time or durational aspect, uh, and intensity factor or loudness, as well as spatial distribution of them all. As I said, this level is beyond our perceptual accessibility. It can be reached only by technological exploration. However, we can merely perceive the traces of this level while experiencing the processes of split and blending of separate parameters of sound which appear in very deliberate situations, such as, for example, overtone singing, when distinct overtones are extracted from one sound, or multiphonic techniques, or also a sound of a bell when the sound is fractioning into separate tones. Uh, so what I wanted to show how timber as a perceptual unity associated with an instrument can be decomposed to subcategories, level by level. Uh, we can also uh, draw a parallel uh, with the levels designated by Hutzma. Um, uh, the lowest level uh, would correspond to physical area, uh, the middle level to sensory area, and the third to cognitive. Uh, the latter corresponding to the learned habits of cultural contexts. As I could propose, this cognitive level is the one which may change when we change the meaning to the perceptual givens gained at the sensory level. 
As I go further, I will suggest that more and more deliberate aspects of timber uh, are involved to compositional consciousness of the 20th, 21st century, uh, which appeals to the sensory level. And thus, the cognitive area extends its sphere. Uh, as we keep in the direction that could be called inside the timber, relatively to that concept of timber as an instrument, going deeper and deeper to its microstructure, now we can extend this hierarchical network to the opposite direction, starting from the same point of timber as an instrument. So from the orchestration field, it is a well-known practice when several instruments or groups of instruments are combined together to create a new fused uh, timber. Uh, this phenomena is uh, also <coughs> called emergent quality. When several different timbers combined together lose their discrete features and identifiability. Instead, they blend into a new emerging quality as an inseparable unity. As we just noted, and what was persistently proposed by, for example, Mark Adams, timber itself, it's in its essence, is basically an emergent quality, as it is a percept appearing because of the combination of multiple factors. So this is just another level of emerging qualities stipulated by the process of blending. Mm, some tendencies of composing practices offers us a further step in this merging fractioning chain. Uh, it is a level where other parameters are also employed in order to create a unique quality uh, called as texture. Um, which can be a realization of any sonic illusion or image conceived by the composer. Oops. As it is pointed out by psychoacoustic researchers, the perception of a homogeneous musical texture requires a grouping of many events across pitch, timbre, and time into a kind of unitary structure the textural quality of which depends on the relations among the events that are grouped together. Here we can observe a kind of parallel between two opposite poles. In this textural level where different parameters such as pitch, rhythmic intensities combined together is like a mirror of the deepest perceptual level where timber appears to be a merger originating from the combination of the same distinct parameters. So we can say that a prototype for this textural level lies in an acoustic origin of timber itself. It is mostly apparent in the manifestations of spectral music, uh, where the scores themselves are like representations of spectral sonograms of particular timber for example, Gruzé, Omri, as Berg van Herk already represented. However, this principle is supposed to encompass um, all the compositional realizations where the separate, separate musical elements, let it be timbres, pitches, rhythms, blend into a unitary formation while losing their distinct identification as we observed in the works by Ligeti, Xanakis, Penderecki, and others. After drawing this gradational schema based on the levels of fusion and fractioning, it is proposed that compositional manipulation of timber highly depends on the level in which composer works, or we can say audiates timber. If he treats timber as different instruments in their basic form, they can be applied as delineators of musical structures, even based on pitch or rhythms. Or maybe he is exploring the sound qualities within an instrument, distancing himself away from binding to a particular source. 
or he's engaged in the processes of fusing, blending timbers and creating new emerging qualities. Of course, strict lines cannot be drawn here and there may be transitions between the levels or mixes of them. So we can trace these opposite tendencies in the works by two pivotal composers of the previous century and even nowadays, uh, of Lachenmann and Tristan Morelli. Yes, so uh, Lachenmann's Del Niente for a solo clarinet player from the perspective of timber as equivalent to instrument should be considered as mono timber like piece. Hence, stimuli for development should arise from other parameters, such as pitch material, rhythmical processes, and so on. However, this is a case where one instrument is approached not as a carrier of more or less homogeneous timber. Instead, it is a kind of machine emanating an entire range of timbers. This temporal deliberation undoubtedly uh, contributes greatly to the developmental procedures as well to an overall form of a piece. Mm, the musical language is mostly based on dialectical contradictions between different sound qualities. Uh, I could represent Lachenmann's temporal material as a scale ranging from noise at one po pole uh, and a pure tone or pitch at the opposite. Maybe in a metaphorical sense, we could draw the scale even from silence to, uh, to normal sound, as the title presupposes, del niente meaning from nothing. However, uh, we have this very soft noise of pure breath, which is actually really close to silence image. So we have an entire range of playing techniques from absolutely noise, uh, breath sound, uh, which is also differentiated to different shades uh, of breath uh, as inhalation, exhalation, indications, mouth uh, cavity and others. Uh, through intermediates like kiss sounds, key noises, slap tongues, and gradually, gradually going to more pitchy sounds, extremely pianissimo tones, uh, multiphonics, and eventually pure tones. Uh, at the beginning of the piece, uh, a composer starts somewhere in the middle of the noise pitch range uh, with passages of very soft tones and we see how pure pitches are brought up from these merely audible sounds, uh, which are gradually extending their area. Uh, the other pole of the qualitative range, pure breath, is also introduced and set against pitch material. Um, and here the intermediate quality is still at disposal. Finally, two opposite qualities reach um, their complete uh, confrontation when set one against another. Um, and later on, uh, the roles are even interchanged when breath sounds take over the dominating position and so on. So if we look uh, back to our drawn schema, uh, we can indicate a tendency of Lachenmann uh, going deeply towards interior of timber, bringing a lot of qualitative aspects to the fore of compositional organization within a territory of one instrument. Mm, compared to the traditional treatment of timber, operating largely on the level where timber is equal to instrument, Lachenmann operates or we say obviates timber in this deeper level. Uh, 
Okay, a completely different realization of the similar conceptual image is manifest in Tristan Murray piece Ethers. Uh, the compositional impetus derives again from the qualitative range from noise to pure pitch and ag again to noise, though it is implemented in a completely different way. And thus releases diverse musical results. In this case, noise is treated not in its direct sense as a perceptual experience of rough, pitchless sound, but here an image of noise is taken, which can be realized in many textural ways, encompassing any parameter of music. The timbral image, a grainy noise produced by maracas in this piece, is exhibited, what is not very common in spectral music, in its raw form at the beginning. Uh, however, this maracas sound Um, uh, this maraca sound in its raw form is not a key element or driver of a piece, as we observed in Lachenmann's piece. Instead, the maraca's image acts as a prototype for forming a texture and organizing other parameters of music. Um, so if we take this beginning uh, uh, of a piece, we see a kind of phases of gradual movements from noise to pitch and again to noise. Uh, after the introduction of maraca sound, the strings emerge from the noise. First of all, playing high harmonics, appearing again dal niente from nowhere, and little by little increasing the dynamic level. The pressure of the fingers is also increased in order to transform harmonic sounds of, of the strings to full tones, uh, thus coming from more noisy sounds to pure tones. Other parameters are also involved in this process. Uh, the strings enter with very high partials of a fundamental tone, here we see sharp, uh, when the harmonic tones are depressed harder to obtain full tones, the pitches uh, transfer to a lower registers and thus approach to a fundamental tone. Mm. We can find this parallel also um, evident in the shaping of time and intensity aspects of texture. Uh, the voices enter independently one from another at the beginning and when the phase reaches its local climax of a pure tone, all voices are synchronized and reaches the same dynamic level at the same point. Yes, but it's only pianissimo at the first phase. Uh, when fading away, they dissolve again irregularly. Uh, we can find this principle all along the piece, which we are not going through in detail now, but I would like to draw shortly on its culmination. Uh, we can notice here how a mass of irregularly shimmering sounds reaches the peak. At the same time, the pitch content uh, arrives at the sphere of the non-harmonic tones. <coughs> so we can call this realization as a textural pole against the raw maracas sound. So the compositional manifestations of these two eminent composers, Helmut Lachenmann and Tristan Murray, represent the opposite poles in respect to uh, my proposed fractioning fusing axis. The first is permitting deeply inside the materia of a body of musical instrument, while the other aims at realizing his illusionary images thus distancing himself away from the direct experience of material bodies and moving towards implementing ac abstract ideas by shaping complex musical textures.
positions, maybe. <laughs> Stage notation and pictorial running side by side, but in a long piece with lots of pages. Um, so, any, any thoughts on that? Okay. Um, by pictor uh, pictorial uh, scores, you mean those uh, indications? Uh, yeah, graphic. More graphic. graphic. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, I found in Lachenmann uh, mostly that. Um, prescriptive uh, um, notation uh, which aims at showing directly what um, uh, performer has to do with his instrument <coughs> yes and I found it not as an uh, image what the sound is uh, should be like but more likely what the body of the of the performer has to do and yes so and I guess that in Lachenmann's case maybe it's even for him more important that physicality even more important than the sound of what what is released yeah so okay Yeah, so I think it brings us very close to that um, physical experience, physical imaginary. Um, yeah, and uh, that's why I say that uh, body eating timber inside the materia, so it uh, brings us more to, to touchable thing. Uh, yeah, when like we touch the instrument, uh, what our physicality of our own s is. Uh, yeah, and uh, while uh, the, that descriptive notation, I guess, is more like abstract, um, abstract image, which shows maybe what the sound should be like. Yeah, I don't know, but maybe I have to think <laughs> more yeah, about it. most of our information through the sense of, of, of seeing, so through vision. Um, now, verbal description is, uh, let's say, uh, psychologically, developmentally, uh, more recent acquirement. We first are able to hear and then begin to construe the, the world through seeing and then develop our verbal conceptual apparatus. So, given that music makes us sort of, our mind working in a more primitive and bodily oriented mode, uh, visual uh, representation is somehow closer to, to, to that stage uh, than uh, verbal. Verbal is more far removed, it's, it's 
probably more difficult to express things in music through through words. Of course, purely technical instructions and follow this way or this way, but uh, it's just an instruction that's uh, naturally connected to music directly. It's very highly mediated. Oh, again, some speculation on my part. <laughs> you may disregard it. Yes, so I think maybe there are not so strict uh, lines between Lachenmann and Murray, uh, but maybe in this case it's uh, apparent that um, in, uh, in Lachenmann's piece how the uh, one timber is reactioning to a lot of lot of different objects, and in Murray is tendency to blend fuse, so that's what. Yeah, but not in all pieces of Lachenmann. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and they are transferring from one another, I, I guess. Well, uh, uh, string quartet is uh, more like uh, an ensemble, an ensemble of more uniform timber. Uh, yeah, and m maybe that fractioning to different shapes of uh, timbers can appear in in uh, ex extending the techniques of timbers, I guess. Yeah, but um, okay, I, I don't know how to go on, but uh, I guess it's quite uniform uh, ensemble, and um, uh, so yeah, maybe I sh should extend something more. No, uh, maybe my question is not very relevant. Just someone <laughs> reminded me. Experienced an almost revolution in Baroque music, uh, an ensemble that used to play um, Brandenburg number three or something that was very much as a homogenous hom sound, but now it's all basically broken up and yeah, yeah. you add the appassionality to that sound rather than the, the one we used to uh, be playing in. Um, okay, we can discuss maybe later this. It will be interesting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Esther. Thank you.